I'm Archbishop Mark Coleridge and you are watching Q&A, question and answer for the Catholic leader. One of the things we Catholics believe is that God is involved in our life. God doesn't just sit up in heaven and look the other way in some stony silence. God is involved in our life in all kinds of ways, seen and unseen. That's why we talk about divine vocation. In other words, what we say is that God calls each of us to follow a particular path. Now, this doesn't mean to say that God twists your arm or kicks the door down. God doesn't work like that. God is very courteous and God is a great respecter of freedom, human freedom because freedom is the greatest gift that God has given us. It's the one we most abuse, but it's still the greatest gift that God has given us. So when we talk about divine call or divine vocation, what we're saying is that God calls us to follow a particular path, but doesn't kick the door down, leaves our freedom intact. Therefore, God can nudge, God can whisper, God can urge, God can, God can give signs and all kinds of things. But there is a need to play our part in this. And this is the way God wants it, wants it. God wants to enter into partnership with us. And that's why we talk about discerning God's vocation in my life or your life. So how then should I or can I discern which path it is that God is holding out to me? Which door is, is God opening? to me. First of all, you've got to listen, because God can call as much as God likes, but if I'm not listening or if I've got a head and a life full of other noise, then I, I'm not going to hear the call. Uh, because again, the voice of God is not a raucous or insistent voice. The voice of God can be very gentle and subtle. So we have to learn an art of listening. Well, how do you listen to the voice of God? First of all, prayer. That's one of the things about Christian prayer. Christian prayer is fundamentally, before all else, a listening to God. You've got to believe that there's something to be heard. I'm not talking about voices booming from the nearest cloud. But there is, there is a voice to be heard, and it's God's. The second thing is uh, read scripture. That's why God's given us the Bible. He wants to communicate with us. And there is a living voice contained in the scripture. So again, we'd be mad not to read scripture if we want to discern the call of God in our life. The other thing is talk to the wise, those with a bit of experience, a few miles beneath them. Talk to the wise because God can speak through them and their experience. So open your heart in prayer, open your Bible and open your ear to, to the word of the wise. So these are fail-safe methods of uh, of listening to, to the voice of God. In the end, God is a bit like a GPS, I sometimes think. Without the GPS, I would be totally bushed in Brisbane. Brisbane's a lovely city to look at, but it's a terrible city to drive around if you don't know the city terribly well. So I'm totally dependent upon my GPS and the lady in it. Just in the same way, we're totally dependent upon God. Now, God is like the GPS in the sense if you make a mistake in the GPS, follow the wrong path, it recalculates and God's like that too, very resourceful and flexible. So we don't need to be afraid of making a terrible mistake. And the second thing is if we do make a mistake, <laughs> God you know, with the GPS only gives us a gentle rebuke and that's again where the GPS is, is like God. So we shouldn't be too afraid either of uh, making a mistake or, or copying a, a rebuke of some kind. Tune in to God and you will find if you are patient enough and learn to listen that there is a voice and a voice will open the door and usher you gently uh, and beautifully along the path that God has always had in mind for you.